So again, well, good afternoon to each and everyone. So our topic for today is a lot, is about Islamic art or Muslim South. Next slide. So, background of Islamic art is, Islamic art is an umbrella term for post 7th century visual arts created by Muslim and non-Muslim artists within the territories occupied by the people and cultures of Islam. Next slide. It embraces art forms such as architecture and architectural decoration or ceramic art, pens, mosaic, and lustre wear and relief, relief sculpture, wood, ivory carving, phrases, drawing, painting, calligraphy, book, gilding, manuscript, illumination, illumination lacquer, painted, and Book binding, textile design, metal working, gold misery, game stone carving, among others. So, Islamic art is not art of a particular country or particular people. It is the art of civilization formed by combination of historical historical circumstances and of the ancient world by the Arabs and informs unification of territory under the Islam, a territory which was in turn invaded and virus group of people. From the start, the direction of Islamic art was largely determined by political structure with cut across geographical and sociological boundaries. The complex Nature, nature of Islamic art is developed of the basis of pre-Islamic tradition in the various countries conquered and co closely integrated blend of Arab, Turkish, and Persian tradition brought together in all parts of the new Muslim or Muslim empire. Next slide po. So, Islamic art has developed form with variety of dif different sources, includes elements from Greek and early Christian art, which it combined the Middle, East, Middle Eastern culture of Egypt, Byzantium, and ancient Persia, along with Far Eastern culture of India and China. Next slide, Bob. Now let's move on to tinalak. So a tinalak is a traditional hand-woven clothes in Dangos. It is a woven in order to celebrate and pay tribute to major life events such as birth, life, marriage, or death within the community. The cloth woven is a abaca fibers. It is a natural dyed from bark, roots, and certain plants. So Atinalak reflects core themes that can be used to understand Filipino-American studies, including to Bayanihan or the Damay, which are example of strong community partnership as a participant or recipient. The whole process of Tinalak weaving from dyeing to weaving, it is descended from generation to generation of mater maternal relatives that um, necessitated community of woven fabrics and traditional plant-based dyeing in the order sustained tradition of Tinalak. Um, by creating a specific color coloration and subset of Tinalak also provide signs of Filipino culture, identity, rank, and status. So, tinalak and other tradition by Filipino fabric and garments production have been by and large ignored by American audience in some way extents. Additionally, tinalak 
weaving is often become substitute from income and bartering, bartering with an uh, increase over the year. Local and overseas work made those who stayed at home rely on culture and, and genuinity in order to sustain their family. So tinalak is the cultural symbolism and connection to indigenous practice are highly relatable and members of this group in the ways our family tradition and similar connected to our cultural identities and heritage. It is symbolized our links, our ancestor because the tinalak is the traditional woman by woman of the community who pretends their daughter and maintain such a tradition we see in the community who i as a something that empower women in the community the impact of female empowerment doubled with the cultural significance of tinalak so tinalak and the other forms of fabric weaving are specific to the Tibuli. So, madidiscuss natin mamaya yung Tibuli. Their culture significance translate to how other societies and group value their own rituals and straighten ties that heritage which turn provide opportunities for later generation to seek deeper understanding of themselves on their culture. Next slide po. Next is the Tibuli art. With their embro embroidered costumes and beaded ornaments, bangles, bracelets, and brass link belts are one of the most colorful of Filipino groups. They are renowned for their tie-dye, abaca cloth, and metal industry, including low wax brass casting soap. Karamihan sa mga Tibuli art is makikita natin sa part ng Mindanao. So, the Tibuli, the Tibuli is symbolized to the celebrate and pay tribute to major life events such as birth, life, marriage, and death within community. So, parang same within lang sa ano, tinalak. So the Tibuli is costume So the Tibuli people ay magtatagpuan sa South Cotabato, Philippines. Next slide po. Next is the piece you beat cloth. It's the price had woven cloth that tau socks of Sulu usually use as herd covering. It made from cotton or silk, square and shape, and provided with geometric patterns. It can also be worn on the shoulder knotted around the hilt of the sword and tied around the head among the tau socks. So, it it is the usually being worn during wedding, wedding or other occasion as a symbol of color, history, and run. Next slide po. Now may I call Mr. Fernandez to continue our report. Ayan, thank you very much po, Mr. Kizon. Dumako naman tayo sa Siputangan. The Siputangan is produced by the Yakan of Basilan, Mindanao, and used predominantly by women either as head cloth or sash. The complex geometric design of the Seputangan consists of the warp and primary weave made of handspun cotton and a supplementary weave or silk. 
it is woven using this continuous supplementary weft technique, which means that the yakan weaver creates the designs without pattern sticks or headless, but intuitively from, from memory. And so most of the yakan female weavers are actually weaving with utmost precision. Dahil nga tulad ng sinabi ko kanina, wala silang guide sa pattern ng saputangan na ginagawa nila. They are making designs by their um, imagination and memory. Kaya naman sa yakan traditional clothes, yung siputangan ang pinakamahal dahil magpusisi ito gawin. They are using supplementary web technique which is kailangan mong mapalutang yung design or um, makagawa ng design by floating extra webs over the ground weave without disturbing the ground weave. So, napaka mabusisi talaga. Pero it also shows how skilled the yakan people, especially the females in weaving. Actually, in the past, all yakan, all yakan women were trained in weaving. Pagka, pagkapanganak pa lang nila, ay it's already decided that magiging weaver sila talang araw. May kaugalian din sila na um, sa pagputol ng pusod ng sanggol. Paniniwala nila na para maging magaling na weaver yung sanggol balong araw, kailangan nilang um, parang masunod yung paraan ng pagputol ng pusod. Ayun. Next slide po. So ayan, makikita nyo merong magkakaiba, magkaibang designs ang seputangan which is depende sa kung sino yung weaver. Dahil nga sabi ko kanina, ginagawa nila ito from their memory. Pero karamihan naman, pare-pareho ng design, meron itong um, diagonal design and rumpus para mga ganyan. Pakikita nyo rin kung paano nila sinusuot itong um, dalawa sa gitna parang more on stylish na siya kasi na for modeling, for modeling purpose yung ginagawa nila. Yung nasa dulo naman yan yung more traditional way of wearing si Putangay. Next po. Ayan, so magkakas naman tayo. Unang halimbawa, panolong. The panolong is a house ornament fashioned by the Maranao people. It is a card beam that put roots in the front of the house and styled with ochre muti. The shape of the panolong is an architectural translation of row, meaning the protruding part in the front of a ship. So ayan, ang panolong ay gawa ng mga Maranao. It has a um, ochre muti which is curvy linear plant-based designs or nakuha nila sa mga halaman yung inspiration ng design niya. While yung mismong appearance niya naman ay inspired sa may harapang bahagi ng mga barko. Purpose niyan ay design siya sa mga bahay dati na mga matataas na dato. May matataas na dato, matataas na tao. Um, halimbawa yung mga dato and sultan. Ayan, kubing. The kubing is traditionally considered an intimate instrument usually used as communication between family or a loved one in close quarters. Both genders can use the instrument females more infrequently than males who use it for short distance courtship. Ayan, instrumento siya nayari sa kawayan. Tinutugtog ito sa pamamagitan ng pag-ipit nito sa pagitan ng mga labi at pagpitas sa dulo nito. Yung bibig natin yung nagsisilbing resonator. Maari ring mabago yung tunog sa pamamagitan ng pagmanipula sa shape ng labi natin. Ginagamit ito sa Um, ginagamit siya madalas sa komunikasyon at pagliligaw. This instrument is from the Southern Philippines where it is used in Muslim communities on the island of Mindanao. Next naman po. Ayan, sa Rimano, 
this Harimanok is constructed in a typical way with a solid body mounted to a stand and appendages like wings, tails, and head are slotted into the body. The appendages are generally stylized and abstracted rather than realistic. The bright and colorful palette is the norm in Marano art. And so it is a it is an artwork ulit na likha ng mga Maranao. Yung appearance niya ay more on stylized or abstract rather than realistic. Pero makikita pa rin naman na ibon siya. Yes, ibon siya and hindi siya manok although sa manok yung pangalan niya. Isa siyang maalamat na ibon ng mga Maranao. Kinaka, kinakatawan niya yung mga mayamang sining ng mga Maranao at sumisipto rin ito ng kasaganahan. Yeah, next po na slide. So, symmetry art. Symmetry is created in Islamic geometric design through the repetition and mirroring of one or more basic design units. Usually shaped such as circles and polygons. Although the design can be elaborated and made complex, the basic symmetrical repetition and mirroring of these shapes creates a sense of harmony. So, gumagamit sila karaniwan ng basic shapes like circles, polygons, or lines. And gagawa sila ng design gamit yung mga shapes na yun and ginagamitan ito ng mirroring effect para maging symmetrical siya. And because of the repetition, ay mag-create ito ngayon ng sense of harmony kaya maa-achieve yung mga ganitong design. Minsan din ay hindi lang basic shapes yung ginagamit nila yung gumagamit din sila ng mga design na konektado sa Islam tulad ng nasa isang litrato yung kulay brown kaya ginagamitan pa rin ito ng repetition syempre and the resulting into symmetrical art next slide po ayan karaniwan siyang makikita sa kanilang mga mosque Ginagamit nila ito bilang design sa kanilang kisame sa mga dingding. Next slide po. Ayan. Panghuli naman ay yung Torogon. A Torogon is a traditional ancestral house built by the Maranao people of Lanao, Mindanao. Philippines for the nobility. A Torogon was a symbol of high social status. Such a residence was once a home to a sultan or datu in the Maranao community. And so Torogan is a resting and sleeping place for datus and sultan. Tanda ang Torogon ng mataas na katayuan sa lipunan dahil nga ito, yung, ito ay pag-aari ng mga datu at sultan. It was created by Maranao people. It was the core of their traditional state craft, costumes and arts. At saka kultura din pala. It is commonly found in Marawi City and other arcas in Lanao del Sur province. Torogon is also actually considered as national cultural treasure. And next slide po. So ayan, kung mapapansin ninyo, sa Torogon ay mayroon siyang panulong sa harap or ito yung na-discuss natin kanina na isa sa mga halimbawa ng wood crops. Kung makikita nyo rin yung Torogon is actually really big. Mukha lang siyang maliit kanina pero kung makikita nyo kung i-copy siya dun sa taong nakatira sa ay nakatira nakatayo sa kanyang tabi. It is actually big. And mainly because it is a symbol of wealth and power. And hindi lang din naman sultan yung mga Um, nagpapahinga dyan at mga nakatira minsan sinasama rin nila yung kanilang mga asawa at mga anak and next slide po so ayan sa puntong ito pala ay tapos na ang aming presentasyon maraming salamat po sa inyong pakikinig naway marami kayong natutunan at nagulat